Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. It's Tuesday night. We're live for another Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin. As always, I'm joined by Tony Has Nine Fingers. What is going on, people? And would you like to introduce our very special guest? Sure. Uh, the director of a movie that not only did I love, but Kevin loved. A couple weeks ago, we were talking about wanting to see it. We sat down and watched it. Uh, the director of Spoonful of Sugar, now streaming on Shudder, uh, Mercedes Bryce Moore. How are you? Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're we're happy to have you. So we a couple weeks back, uh, there was a, a friend of ours that was on the show, and we were talking about stuff that was coming out, and Spoonful of Sugar was in the mix, and um, and like we read the synopsis, and to at first Tony was just like, I don't know, because it mentioned like trippy stuff, and he's like, I'm not really into that kind of stuff, and then he checked it out. He's like, Yeah, you need to check this movie out. So I have Shutter, and I checked it out, and uh, I I immediately was like. I'm all about this. This is great. Um, so it's it's uh, it's something that I don't know. It, it, it's it, I, have you ever heard of the movie May? May is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Okay, so this yeah, same here. I, I've uh, I've been one of those like you know it's one of those things where I've uh, I, I want to sign a petition or start a petition because it's never been released on Blu-ray, and I want a good may release on on blu-ray because it's it deserves it i want to see some extra stuff if it's possible but uh so this this made me think of may so yeah i guess this take that with that way thank you when i heard like people started comparing it to may i was like oh thank you <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> compliment yeah totally and um so yeah, this this one. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of newer stuff that comes to Shutter, and I watch a lot of it. And some of it grabs me, some of it doesn't. But yeah, this one, like right off the bat, I was like, "This is a crazy story." I know you didn't write it, but I'm sure your style. Obviously, you you directed it. Um, so a lot of the uh, the stuff that uh, was done, you know, was your choice, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, first perfect. off, congratulations with that. And, um, and how, like, how did it all come to be? Like, have you worked with the writer before or is this, was it a whole new relationship starting? No. So actually it was a whole new relationship. So Leah St. Marie, who wrote it and did an incredible job, basically, uh, her script was on two different lists and I had two different people send it to me saying, Mercedes, this movie is wild and very weird and out there and different. You would love this. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, like, we'll see. And then I read it and I went, oh my God. <laughs> I like, I have to make this movie. And so I send it to Katrina Kudlick, who's one of the producers on the project. And she always jokes that she started reading it and she pushed her meeting, which she never does to finish it. And then we brought on the rest of our team with Vanishing Angle. And so what was really amazing about this project is I feel like it's a very specific type of project. So the people who were on it were just on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a different kind of movie for sure uh, in a very <laughs> good way. And um, real quick, we have the one and only... MSJ in the chat room saying that this movie is on my to be watch list as soon as I get a day off. Um, I I get it. I mean, but this was something and it's it's a movie too. like, you know, enough can be said about like holding your attention. And um, this movie hold, like held my attention completely. Like it wasn't I, I didn't even have a thought like I should probably check to see if anyone messaged me back on Instagram or, you know, it was not none of that. I was just like, what the hell is going on? This is ridiculous in a good way. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's one of those things that, uh, I've been recommending to a lot of people, um, whether or not they've watched it yet. I don't know. Uh, a friend of mine who recommended May to me, I was like, you need to check this out. You need to. Um, and uh, yeah, so Sergio's in the chat saying hi to everyone. Hello, Sergio. And, um, so, so yeah, uh, how much of the, uh, I mean, this, how, how different is it from what you read? 
Like, was there any changes made that were your choice or anything like that? Definitely. So I think it's, it's similar to what I read in a lot of ways. I'd say that one of the biggest changes that we added on in the way that we filmed it is the ending shot of the movie. So sorry mm-hmm. for spoilers, but basically when we go underground, that was mm. something that we added on. Um, That's all, I loved it. That, that was yeah. the probably right at the, I was like, that is probably one of the coolest like end credit scenes that I've seen. Like you have your beginning credits where it's like, okay, this is really cool and stuff. But that I was like, I don't remember being, you know, the end credits where I actually wanted to see it besides, you know, like the deleted scenes of some people that we always wait for. Mm-hmm. But that I was like, this is actually really cool between the music and just the visuals. I was like, this is one of the coolest like end credits. I think I've, I, I wanted to bring that up in here too, but that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, our team made that possible. And I think another part, too, that was out on us, just the way that we filmed Millicent's masturbation scene, we made it mm-hmm. a lot more dreamier and trippy. Um, mm-hmm. We're like, yeah, let's put them in this dark space and spin around them, um, because why not? <laughs> right. And plus, you know, what yeah. she's what she's dealing with herself and, yeah. you know, her treatment for what she's dealing with. Um, so... MSJ is asking, uh, he's saying the trailer was so good. Do you have any say in uh, what was in the trailer? Yeah, definitely. So it was a really collaborative experience because I know a lot of directors sometimes don't have a say, um, but we were able to actually sit together because I feel like a lot of movies I've loved have trailers come out and they're different than that. So we wanted to capture the movie in the trailer. Yeah, I agree with 100%. (laughs) A lot of times the trailer doesn't sell the movie. Either it doesn't sell it enough to, to yeah. like, wow, this movie's so much better than the trailer was, or sometimes it sells it too much. We're like, none of that stuff I saw in the trailer is in this movie. Like, it just drives totally. me, it drives me crazy. As a, as a person who likes to go to the movies mm-hmm. and stuff too, it's something that it drives me crazy. I'm like, ah, that's not what I was sold, you know? Uh, but whatever. No, no. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, how soon into like, well, I'm gonna, I'm just jumping all over the place. How long did it take from beginning to end to make the movie? Like, when you became involved, like, what was that like? the time period was. Yeah. So um, it basically, it took a year from when I got the script to people going, yes, we want to make this. But what was funny is COVID, a little thing called COVID happened. And yeah. I did another horror movie called Fixation, which came out at TIFF. And this movie was actually supposed to shoot before Fixation, but they got switched because of COVID. And so we ended up shooting that one and then coming back and shooting this one. Um, so it was kind of like overall total span was two years, which in movie time, I'm really grateful for her because that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's like five years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We know. Yeah, they, we've had plenty of directors uh, on and we're just like, I've been working on this thing forever. We actually, I guess we had last week, uh, Joe Stoffer. He was working on his movie Pieces of Talent for just about five years. And uh, it's it's a fantastic movie, but it, it really wore him down, you know. Um, but that, that's 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 interesting. And I, I'm assuming, obviously, if you're directing something else, your focus is on that. But was it ever in a time where you're like thinking like, OK, this is how I'm going to do this when we, when we do get around to making this movie? Oh, yeah, that's what I did all throughout quarantine. Like I, I was one of those people in quarantine where like I was so nervous. I was like, I'm not seeing anyone for months. And so I would just sit and think about this movie and plan out this movie. So even though I got pushed when we picked it up again, I go, oh, I've already shot the movie in my head. Let's go. Let's make it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Sergio is asking if we missed the trailer. We didn't miss the trailer. I'm going to be playing it around the halfway mark, Sergio. So, uh, yeah, just don't, you know, just be careful. And sometimes you walk away and then you come back. I missed the trailer. So we'll be playing it probably like in another like 15, 20 minutes. But um, so, yeah, I've been talking a bunch. Tony. Uh, one thing you mentioned before, right in the beginning, was how it just kept it didn't lose your focus. I like with this movie. It just as it goes there's more cracks in the in the story and breaks it into many different because watching so many movies, I'm the kind of person that's like, okay, that's the killer. This is going to happen or this. We try and to figure it I out. Yeah. Try to figure it out like 10, 15 minutes into the movie. But as this movie went, I was like, hmm, okay. Because then it's just like different characters develop and then you're like, okay, who's the bad one in this situation? And it just keeps on going and going and going. It's like at the end, I was like, I don't know. I don't know who's the worst out of the situation, but it was, it was. Well, we figure the, out who's, who's for the worst by the end of the movie. Well, yeah, yeah. By the end of the movie, but <laughs> yeah, it's like, but, okay. but that's the thing. But the thing is, is that, like you said, we try to figure out movies all the time. And it was something that I was like, I didn't see that coming, you know? So that says a lot it, too. 
Cool. And, and like, which I love to hear because something I like to do with my movies is the way that I go into the editing process, we'll screen them to people. So with this, we screened it to about like 80 people. And I tried to make sure that at least two thirds of them were like hardcore horror fans. So I'm like, you like this genre. You've seen a lot of horror movies. And I would have them stop. I would literally have them stop at 15, 30 minutes, 45 and say, what do you think is going to happen? And if people hmm. were guessing it too soon, we would go into the edit and rework it to be like, okay, we're giving people clues where they can piece it together and feel good at the end, but like they shouldn't guess it yet. Um, so that's right. something that that's like, smart. Really about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a really good idea. Um, I wonder if other people do that. I'm curious, but I mean, unfortunately yeah. there's a lot of movies where we do end up figuring it out. That doesn't mean it's a bad movie, but yeah, totally. you know, it's, it's, you guys watch if, a lot of movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, but if it's something that like will surprise us, that's even better. Uh, Life is Pain is in the chat saying, what's good, everyone? You know what's good? is Spoonful of Sugar. You should be checking that out on Shutter right now. See how I worked that in there? It's a, it's a little plug. Um, it's on Shutter right now. And I think if you have, uh, it was an AMC Plus, it's on that as well. Um, speaking of that, um, is this your first uh, like movie that has got onto like a streaming service like as quickly as it, as it has? No, exactly. Even though I made Fixation first, this is my first movie released. So, yes. Oh, really? Yes. I, you, you did some shorts and stuff before, right? I did. Yeah. I've done like a lot of shorts and music videos and commercials. And it's funny because my music video and commercial work is very like happy light, but like I have a dark, disturbed soul. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, this is the stuff like I really love. like. I love that. But like, I really want people to let me make these type of things. Right. Well, you, you can show all the all the like uh, tame stuff and be like, see, I know what I'm doing. Now, let me just murder <laughs> a bunch of people on screen. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, that's awesome. And it's, it's, it's weird to think a movie that's, that, you know, looks as good as this looks and is as good as it, as it is. It's, a, it's your first movie to be released. That's crazy. Yeah. Congrats <laughs> again. That's, Thank that's you. awesome. Thanks. I, just, I don't know, man. It's a, uh, I always, when I hear stuff like that, I'm just like, wow, I've really accomplished nothing in my life. Um, and the one, <laughs> the one thing that helps too, is you mentioned COVID before, I think because of COVID shutter became a whole different because before shutter different was animal, like yeah. like uh okay you had your normal horror movies now you have series on there you have shutter originals and all that so being placed on shutter i mean it's like i don't want to say net uh you know neck and well, neck with Netflix, amc yeah but it's, it's amc plus that's owned by them that's that's pretty big i mean you know known for a little you know little like nothing shows like the walking dead you know, like it's that's a big deal for for horror. That's I think yeah, that's that's huge. And like you said, with with COVID, more people are just looking for stuff, and you know they're going to find it. That's for sure. Um, totally, and we get our audience, which is really important to me. I'm like, I want I want the people who like this type of movie to be able to watch this type of movie. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, yeah. Any idea if it's ever going to get like a physical release or anything? Because uh, we're collectors, um, so this is one because I can't have May in my collection. I definitely want to have, I mean, I have the, the, the DVD of May, but I can't, because I can't have the Blu-ray of May. Um, I, w I definitely want this one if it's possible. Yeah. I'm not sure, but if that does happen, I will let you know. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Shutter. a lot of times, you know, they, they do release some stuff um, and usually at a pretty good price too. So it's even better, but. Totally. Now, did you always know you wanted to direct first? Because we've had people on where it's like, they started in acting. They knew they wanted to do that. And then as they progressed, it's like, okay, maybe I want to write. Maybe I want to direct now. Did you just take the straight path to directing? Did you ever want to try, you know, work on the other side? I love directing. I feel like I've I've known that I wanted to direct it like direct since I was in third grade. I would go over to my neighbor's house down the street and we would take our camcorder and we'd do things where we're like, let's act out like our own version of a Star Wars story. Um, <laughs> or, you know, we would just make up our own narratives. But I think for me, I like directing because it's also just working with people. It's OK, great. You have this idea. But how do you get this whole group of people to love this idea as much as you do? and work these really crazy days and creating something together. Um, and so for me, that's like, I love, I love being on set. Like I love being in the dirt of making it. Yeah. It seems, I mean, it seems really cool. I've only been on a few sets, but uh, it, it, it's very interesting. And even back when in elementary school, same deal. When like, I, I, I think it might've been like fourth or fifth grade. We we're like, draw a picture of what you want to be when you grow up. And I, I drew a picture of me 
but it was with one because I watch a lot of classic TV and stuff with my dad. It was one of those crank cameras. Um, <laughs> it was me with one of those, and uh, they called my parents to come in because of the where the crank was. They thought it was a picture of me flipping them off, uh, but it wasn't. <laughs> I'm like, I want to make movies. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, my parents had to come in from half across the city, but whatever. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, what? Uh, so, is horror like? Are you a big horror fan in general? Yeah, I am a big horror fan. Um, like, I love, I love all types of movies, but I feel like mm -hmm. I really love horror because I, you know, I came up. I've been on other projects before where I had execs tell me they're like okay like but that scene made me feel a little uncomfortable and i'm like yeah but that was the point yeah. <laughs> like i i like feeling that way and i like a group of people who aren't scared of that i feel like that's kind of why there's also a horror community is like more so there's not as many other movie genres that has as big of a community built around it and i think it's right. kind of people sharing that of like okay this is our outlet to feel this way um and so i think it's really special in that sense yeah a lot of times, like I'll be at a con, I, I know Tony's been going to a lot of cons recently and stuff too. And we'll see people that we know, like only from cons and we're like, Hey, what have you seen? Like what, whatever. So this will be, I was at a con a couple of weeks ago and I was just like, you guys need to check out. It was, it wasn't even a, a horror con. It was a anime and video game con. I Amazing. knew nothing about what was going on, but I'm like, you guys need to check out Spoonful of Sugar. <laughs> um, yes. but, uh, that's, a, I love that. <laughs> that's one thing too, with the community, that's how we, heard of spoonful of show what was it um what was the website you saw uh, bloody it, disgusting bloody disgusting oh, cool. was right so that's where you know a lot of people if you don't have time you look at these websites and they're like okay you definitely got to check this movie out so we didn't have a guest the week and we just talking about upcoming movies and that's what like kevin was saying i read the synopsis and i was thinking more of like uh climax or anything like anything too trippy I guess that's one thing too with horror. You have so yeah. many different outlets that it can so hit 15 different things. So at that point, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, eh, you know, it's just not my thing. But then I watch it and I'm like, okay, it says that. And the plot just kept growing and went in a different direction. And I'm like, I'm digging this. And then, yeah, I the trippy part to wasn't, check it out for sure. wasn't the trippy part no. wasn't really, I mean, it was trippy, but it wasn't like, Overpowering. It's very subtly trippy. Right, right, yeah, right. definitely. Because there's some know, movies some... where it's like you're gonna trip while you watch this movie. Exactly. Um, right. Exactly. Like... And there's, there's there's people yeah. <laughs> that don't partake in uh, you know those substances, so it's something where it's like they may not they may be shied away from it. You know. Um, totally. Yeah, but uh, you know it's their loss, anyways. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So uh, if you if uh, Sergio usually asks when I ask him, I'm gonna ask before he has a chance. Sorry, Sergio. <laughs> Um, do you have like a horror movie that like in your in your youth that affected you to the point where you're like, I need to I need to do this. I keep thinking about this movie, you know? Oh, man. Um, One of my like early, early favorite horror movies was Freaks. Um, And I think it's oh, yeah. because I'm like, this is such a special. This could never be made again in time movie. So like, I don't know what that is in my lifetime, but it's like making something that other people couldn't make for some reason because of like mm -hmm. who's in it is something yep. that I would love to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, I, I literally was just talking about that movie uh, a couple days ago, I went out to eat with some friends and we we're talking about movies and I was talking, cause I do another podcast where we just talk about black and white horror. And I was just like, there's one scene in that movie where like, he's like one of the, one of the guys is like underneath uh, a carriage and he's just like crawling through the mud mm -hmm. with a knife in his mouth. I'm like that, that image is like stuck in my brain. Like it's yes. in, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, who doesn't sing that song together? Yeah, <laughs> one of us, one of us. We accept it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. And we... they use it on Robot Chicken too, right? Isn't that there in the end credits on Robot Chicken? <laughs> I think. I don't know. I guess I'm a nerd, but um, I love it. But yeah, no, that, that's a good one. And uh, like, uh, as far as like any newer horror, has there been anything that uh, you've you stumbled across? Even like, because you may you may have an opportunity to see some things that you know, maybe a little earlier than some of us. Is there anything that you're like, oh, you guys need to check this out when it comes out or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, like, I think, you know, it's, it's very mainstream, but like hereditary. I just think I love because I, it's, it's a new era yeah. of horror where it's like drama horror, which like, I really love personally. I also, I love all types of horror. Like I love yeah. campy. I love gory. I love drama horror, but I think that was just one that like shocked me and I didn't expect to feel that much going into it. Yeah. Oh, I really liked it yeah. too. Um, <laughs> most of uh it's an a24 movie right yep I think yeah so. most yeah. of the stuff that they put out i'm i'm all about um 
there's a there's a few things like you go into like some uh, like slow burns like a lot of like slow burn horror where it's just like mm -hmm. the story just builds and builds and builds and builds yeah. and then it just there's a huge payoff at the end um totally and like, like on that i mean i don't know if people would consider i consider i think i even have like a broader genre for horror is like movies that make me feel horrified i even call it the, oh, yeah. like a ghost story you know like mm -hmm. for me that is the slowest burn most like painful existential Mm -hmm. movie i've seen in a long time so for me that's another one where i'm like people should go see this so that oh yeah, like, yeah. Feel like, really like, scared. I, like, <laughs> I don't like horror movies i'm like oh did you see seven I'm like oh yeah i'm like that's that scared the shit out of me so yeah totally <laughs> sounds of the lambs is a horror movie no matter how many people say it's not it's a horror movie um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a big like uh, i like ty west a lot and a lot of his stuff is really slow burn he did like a uh, house of the mm -hmm. devil and um mm -hmm. and keepers stuff like that that like I don't know. There just needs to be more stuff like that out there. I mean, and then he did X said, and Pearl. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of pretty much everything. You know, for the for the most part, I think some of the slashers have kind of been overdone. You know, but uh, mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing too because it's always something to watch. They're always fun. You know, usually. Yeah. Um, definitely. But yeah, it's weird how like the horror genre will just go through phases, and you'll see like a ton of movies about like a certain thing because one of them takes off and it's just like, yeah. okay, now we're going to have a yeah. billion shark movies or we're going to have a billion clown movies or we're going to have, you know, oh, whatever. Totally. Yeah. 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 But, uh, I literally go into really meetings and ones. people are like this thing. They're like, make the next, this thing. And it's like, okay, cool. Like there's a million things, <laughs> right? but it's like, people are like, this is what people want right now, which I get it. It's also, it's like, what's in the zeitgeist, right? It's like, there's some things where it's like with, Rosemary's Baby. It's like birth control was being talked about at that time. So things yeah. just become classic because people don't even realize that that's what everyone's thinking about at that moment in history. Right. So I also like looking at that too. I'm like, what is what are people experiencing in history at that moment? And so everyone's mm. talking about it in that way. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I, I mean, we've brought yeah. up similar kind of things on the uh, on the Black and White Fright Show where we're just like, like they're like, oh, this wasn't that crazy or whatever. I'm like, but think about it. This movie was made in like 40 something what was the world like back then? And imagine never seeing anything like this before you go to the movies yeah. and you see this, you'd be terrified. Yeah. It's a big rubber monster. That looks dumb to them. It looked real. You know, I yeah. was terrified at uh, poltergeist back in the day. And uh, when you watch the scene of the guy peeling his, like the skin off his face and everything, it just looks like a Muppet, you know, but it terrified mm -hmm. me as a kid, but uh, you know, whatever it is. Totally. What it is, right. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> Tony. Now uh, with you mentioned may being, I don't know, a, uh, you're a fan of it. You, yeah. you, you watched it. or maybe, maybe brought to light, uh, with spoonful of sugar. Was there anything else you watched beforehand that you're like, maybe I want to incorporate a little bit of this and a little bit of that is, is there any movies that you took inspiration yeah. from? Definitely. Um, well, I mean, the way that our writer likes to pitch this movie is she said the way that she thought of it is what if Lolita were babysitting Mike Myers <laughs> oh geez and Michael Myers yeah. <laughs> yeah and so and so those were like big inspirations for us it's like okay like how do we take these different parts of these genres um and I think that's something too is like not only horror movies but like I love you know Lolita was a reference in its own way but also yeah. like I love European dramas a lot because I feel like they do things that American movies are scared of like a lot of mm -hmm. you know it's like Old Boy is one of my favorite movies, the Korean one, because it's like, yeah. I don't guess the plot twist of those movies because I feel like Americans are a little scared sometimes. <laughs> um, and I'm like, times, okay, cool. Yeah. Let's see people be extra horrible. Like sometimes I don't actually expect that. Yeah. Here's a little yeah. blasphemous. I've never seen Old Boy. I've never <laughs> you seen should. it. Yeah, oh, yeah. That actually came Not up in the, the same American conversation. One. Yeah, I was just like, oh, I've, yeah. I'm just a big fan of the American one, and they're like, everyone's looking at me I'm like, I'm just kidding. I haven't seen that one either. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, well, that's it, that's how it's on the list is. for sure. I mean, yeah. everything is so watered down here. You got a lot of the like, um, like Ringu and and the uh, what is the other one? Um, uh, the Grudge, right? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't even. Think. I forget what it's Juan. called. Yeah, Juan. Yeah, Juan mm -hmm. and Ringu. They, I mean, they're like, oh my god, the American versions are so crazy. I'm like, did you ever check out the? Yeah. You know, they're the way better. Yeah. To it. yeah. It, it's like there's no holds bars sometimes. And it's yeah. crazy because totally. you look at some, some movies here get banned in other countries, but then you get other movies like that, that it's like, how'd this get banned if, you, if you're right. playing movies like this? Because some of so them are wild. like, I'm like, wow, did not expect that to happen. 
I think it's all and, politics, no, totally. honestly. Uh, yeah, because like, look at stuff like like Texas Chainsaw Massacre being banned for however long it was banned, and there's no gore in that. There's no blood in that. It's all implied. No. Um, Angel's yeah. in the chat on Facebook saying, what's up, guys? How's it going? It's going great. He was the guy that was on the show with us uh, when we were talking about this movie. I don't know if he's watched it yet. He's been uh, dealing with some stuff. But if you haven't watched it, Angel, you need to. I'm going to drive mm-hmm. to your house. I'm going to force you to watch it. Um, <laughs> don't watch it with your kids. I'm just saying. But you can watch it. Um, parts of it you can watch with the kids. Other parts, not so much. Um, yeah, but, like the uh, rabbit skinning scene. You know. Yeah. No, actually, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it, I, I I kept telling my wife, I'm like, you need to check this out. Like, you, I think she would really like it. And then I was just like, I was thinking about the rabbit stuff, and I'm like, ah, she's she's a vet tech. So, like, if yeah. there's a movie that I hear a dog died in and I don't tell her about it, like, and she sees it, she she gets mad at me. So, I mean, like, I'm a actually, vegan, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not real. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not like it really did it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's uh. Yeah. I don't know. I just can't say enough ab- about the movie. It's uh. It's I, like I legit had been thinking about it for days afterwards. You yeah. know, for days. Because, that's yeah. That's big. I think. I think that's huge. <laughs> like it's it's not very often that that happens. Where yeah. I'm just like, what were like some of the b- yeah? What were like some of the things that like stuck with you after thinking it about it like days later? Well, th- well, they well. One of the things is, uh, you know, my, my dad worked uh, as a, a, a nurse for the state and in the mental institutions and stuff like that. And he was talking about different treatments and stuff like that, um, you know, back from when he was, he did electroshock therapy still back then. And, you know, all these things, uh, he's, he's in his 80s now. But uh, so like I was just sitting there thinking, like, is this really a thing that still happens? Like, uh, you know, with like people that are dealing with mental illness and, and are they going to that extreme? And I'm like, I guess I need to be a little more crazy and, uh, you know, get some, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, but it was, it was that. And then also too, I mean, it's, it's huge, like around the world now with uh, autism and stuff like, you know, people on the spectrum and all these other things. And it's, that made me think of it too. And it was actually, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'm going to one of, uh, oh. one of my friends, uh, he's on the spectrum and he's, he's pretty, you know, and he didn't like the movie. And I think it's because I don't know if he was offended by that part of it, but he never answered me. So mm. either way, I'll find out because I'll see him at a con soon enough. Yeah. And I'll be like, hey, what and on that, too. Like? Yeah. Yeah. On that, too. I just have to say, like, I have people in my family who are on the spectrum. And I know mm-hmm. that, like, some people have interpreted the movie in that way. But I think mm-hmm. it's something that people miss is there's a line in the beginning where she goes, we thought it's autism, but we don't know what it is. And so it's more right. so that they're they're tr- they're grasping at straws. They're like, it's allergies. It's autism. We don't know what it right. is. Yeah, they're um, trying so to figure out. Yeah, they're trying to figure it out. And so like we very purposely are not making a comment on that. Um, yeah. So you can tell your friend that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I will. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> and that's the thing is I'm like, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, like even yeah. if you didn't like the story, you can't take away like how it looks and the acting in it like you can't yeah, say that it's a, like in my opinion like if you're going to argue that something's horrible you have to have a leg to stand on kind of thing <laughs> and it's just like well come at me come at me bro you know well, I'm just kidding. that's a um, problem as, as broad as the you know fan bases for horror movies but i'm guessing that's for every genre it is you get the yeah. people that are totally. just like i hated it why i hated it okay why oh i just hated yeah. it. didn't like okay. it well Thank you for that That's lovely life. conversation and stuff. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah, there's yeah. movies that I don't like that I I will have a reason. It may not be a great reason, but I have a yeah. reason. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things where I just want people to give things a chance. I and mean, mm-hmm. I think people are crazy if they don't watch this. If they have the <laughs> availability to watch, or they if they have Shutter or AMC Plus, or if, even if it comes out on Blu-ray, fingers crossed. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's, one. It's crazy. You brought it up to acting. That's the one thing too. A smaller cast, but it's just like everybody hit their part. And then, like I said, as the movie's going, I'm like, okay, I didn't see that coming, or a twist here, or like a different mm-hmm. change in character. I'm like, okay, well, that yeah. was that was. It. So, did you have a say in the uh, the casting, or did you totally. work with anyone yeah. before? Totally. So um, Morgan, who plays Millicent, I, I think the reason why we chose her is I've been wanting to work with her for a while. And she just has this such wonderfully odd way of playing of playing it, which is why I think people That's reference May. She's just like, exactly, she's her exactly. own unique self. <laughs> and it's just like, it's her because so many other actresses could have played this role, not that. And I'm like, no, like I want this type of person playing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so 
Definitely. And then as for the kid, the kid's name is Danilo. And that kid is one of the most professional actors I've ever worked with. And what's really interesting is his parents did not let him read the script. And they're like, basically, they're like, he's too young for this. I'm like, you know, we want to horrify people. We don't want to like mess up kids. <laughs> horrify him. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah, or horrify him. And so what his mom would do is she would explain at each point, like what he needed to know. So like, for example, she would say like, you know, you think that Millicent is like your mom and you want to, you know, like you want to protect her because you think that someone's trying to hurt her. And so that's why you're trying to do this. And so it would be like mm -hmm. very specifically explaining in that way. Or for example, there's the scene in the backyard where it's the sex scene and we go to the window and he's screaming in the window mm -hmm. like that. He, yeah. The kid was not there for that. Like we VFX that. So we shot it without him and then we added him in. Um, and then I like, as for the other actors, um, like Michael, who plays the dad, I've worked with him before because, you know, it's a it's a sexual role. And so, like, I really need my actors to trust me and vice versa. And so it's people knowing like, OK, we're down for this. We want to do this. Like, we know how we're being painted. And that's what I think makes movies like this get made. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's yeah. the thing, too, is I didn't recognize anyone in this movie, but they were all fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And my wife actually recognized him. Uh, the, oh, really? uh, yeah, I don't know what from, yeah. but she's like, I've seen that guy in something. And then she found it, but I, I don't know if it was a TV show yeah. or something, but, uh, so th if anything that was going to make her watch it, but then I'm like, Oh, there's bunnies. And she's like, Oh, it's bunnies. Great. No. Yeah. There's bunnies. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll make the it bunnies up. So don't good. get treated well. Yeah. <laughs> he gets treated yeah. fine. The bunnies on the other hand. Um, no. but yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things where, and it, like one, one thing too, is that I didn't know you as a director. You said this is your first feature. So this is something that I'm going to be looking for more stuff, you know, down the road. So fingers Let crossed. Me yeah, I, I'm going to be. Uh, it's, it, it's weird because I, I usually like to see like a progression in people's careers. Mm -hmm. Like because we had a lot of first time filmmakers on here that are very, very micro budget. You know, they don't they're not making mm -hmm. music videos. They're not making commercials. And I you get to see them progress over the years. But it's like you already have a killer killer movie right off the bat it's just like <laughs> now i'm hoping this, it was the same thing with ty west when i found ty west i was like this movie's amazing i'm like hopefully beyond hope beyond hope he all his movies still say stay awesome and they have so yeah <laughs> i i have hope and angel saying bunny yeah bunny just be on the lookout for a bunny um, and you mentioned yeah. you mentioned uh the little boy the one thing mm -hmm. is i remember back in the day they would say never Never cast. Uh, you know, it's hard to work with kids and and animals in movies. Yeah. But now there's a lot of young kids coming up in the business, especially mm -hmm. some of the indie stuff that seem like they have a head on their shoulders. Like I just went to a con and met uh, the two kids behind Terrifier Two, and they were definitely and the little girl and Megan and all that. So it seems like mm -hmm. maybe that stigma might be changing a little bit, or I don't know. Maybe they, everyone just realized kids yeah. are creepy. Yeah. <laughs> kids are creepy. always yeah but i think it's also it's just like kids who are good actors they just genuinely are feeling it whereas like we we auditioned so many kids through this role that we're not right for the role because the second we go okay like you you need to have a freak out um you could tell that they were just faking it and couldn't do it so i think it's just mm -hmm. kind of like kids are genuinely themselves and feeling it and either they are or they aren't so that's why mm -hmm. when there's a good kid actor everyone pays attention to them hardcore <laughs> Yeah, that's something yeah. too. Like I'm sure, I'm sure we'll see uh, more of him down the road. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, as long as it, as long as the bites, uh, the actual bites, uh, weren't improv. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that he wasn't <laughs> just biting people. Um, yeah. yeah. W. C. Fields said never work with kids or animals in the '40s. Well, W. C. Fields mm -hmm. was wrong. What? <laughs> I don't know if this is from Wolfie. And um, he's one of the guys that comes on the show too. I don't know if he's watched it yet. I I told him like, you need to watch this because it has a it gave me a real like May feel. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully he's yeah. watched it. If not, you're fired from something you don't get paid for. <laughs> um, Goodbye. But uh, it's about that time though. We want to we want to play the trailer and then we can talk about it a little bit and also talk about what else you got going on. So I'm gonna do that now. So Sergio, if you're in the room, pay attention. If you're not in the room, you have to watch it after. But here we go. Here's the trailer for Spoonful of Sugar, streaming now on Shutter and AMC+. You look young for your age. People aren't always as they seem, Mrs. Michaels. He doesn't speak. He's allergic to all animals, sugar, gluten, seeds of any kind. Just treat him like any other kid. 
you do a lot of babysitting? Sometimes. She's very, um, innocent. Most people are liars. Do you want me to be part of your family? And I'm gonna have to ask you to do something. I think your son is really special. I'm glad you're here. Do you like her more than mommy? Who is your mother? You don't have to pretend. You have to be a good girl. I can do that. I want more from you. Family. It's the most important thing yep <laughs> yeah there we go um that, that actually made me think i was i i actually kind of wish that we had more of her background because it, when she's smelling the book and everything um, I got, almost yeah. want to know more about how that all started. I mean, they they do you do touch on it a little bit, but it's just like yeah, it's almost like one of those things where like, oh, this kid really crazy. <laughs> well, what's funny is like if you in the actual diary she has, we wrote out more of her backstory of like, okay, she was with this foster family and this foster dad before. So even though it's not in the movie, that's something that Morgan and like the actress and I went through. We're like, where were you at each point in your life? <laughs> yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Wolfie's saying that even uh, I love the creepiness of the trailer, even after seeing the film. So he has watched it. So you're rehired, Wolfie. Um, so you're just saying he saw the trailer. Thank you, Sergio. And then uh, Life is Pain is saying, damn, this looks good. It is good. I promise. <laughs> like, you, Thank the, you guys. I think the trailer is great. I think the trailer is great. But uh, yeah, the mm -hmm. movie, like legit. It, it, it's not very often that I'm like, you need to see this. And actually, I think the last time I was really gung ho this much was probably with Pieces of Talent, which... We just had Joe on again. About every every show, yeah, at least I one, talk about so. it a lot, you know, because it's <laughs> there's a lot of examples, you know, for new filmmakers and stuff, like things that he learned, yeah. and, you know. So it's uh, that's that's interesting. What did you learn making this? Is there anything you would have done different? Oh, um, I love that question. I think what I learned, hmm, it's so hard to like go through multiple movies and like separate it out. I think. What I would do differently, I think the the fact that some people are misconstruing it as being, you know, anything against autism is something I would mm -hmm. want to go through and just make even more clear because that wasn't our intention. But I guess right. just of of what I learned is just I, I'm proud of the way that we did our plot twists. And so I think I learned like, OK, mm -hmm. this method works for us. Um, and I think like other than that, you know, like this was a small movie, <laughs> like this is a couple people in a house as a lot of horror movies are. And so I think it was rather than learning of just going like, okay, cool. How can we like expand now past this? Like, yeah. as I continue to make more movies. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Like when, like with this, I mean, it looks like I, I, I mean, I'm just a, I'm a, just a viewer of movies, but uh, you know, it, you know, I understand it's a small film and whatever, but it looks like a much larger film. You know what I'm saying? Thank like you. it looks, <laughs> it looks like a bigger budget movie. Um, Thank and that, you. that being said, if it was bigger budget and they got different actors and stuff like that, I don't know if it would be so good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. it, I think it was what choices. it was supposed to be. Yeah. 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 And also like our cinematographer, Nick Matthews, was amazing. He's actually the horror movie I'm about to shoot. He's also doing. Um, but like we had this very specific, distinct visual style where we're like, OK, we're going to choose this house that has like really unique dark walls um, to like make this look in this specific way. Um, and so like everyone just crafted it for that very specifically. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Awesome. Cause I was going through it. It kind of had like, uh, the one thing when I was going through, it was kind of like a grim fairy tale kind of deal. Almost totally. like a, almost like a snow white turn bad or whatever. Like it yeah. was just <laughs> a, a different feeling that I had when I was watching it. And then the one thing you talk, were talking about before is how it sometimes you get just certain movies that come out all the time. This, I don't, I don't remember seeing a movie that has this kind of plot to it where it's like, okay, this movie, I can compare it to this. Like you have to take a few different movies and piece it together. Other times it's like, okay, well, if you seen this, it's almost like this, or this one is, is just so different than other movies I've seen that. I think that's why I like it so much. Hmm. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's why when people are like, what are your references? I'm like, there's so many movies that I love and pull right. from, but like, and we tried to make even, it its own thing. <laughs> even bringing up May, it's not like it's, you know, a shot for shot remake of May. It's a, it's just the vibe of it is is a, like the awkward girl doing what she thinks is right. And, you know, like uh, just, you know, doing doing what she's got to do. And it just, yeah. just even, even her, like, I think, again, if it was a different actress, it may not have been as, as much for me. But yeah, uh, totally. She, I, like, I, really I love awkward girl great. movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a, it's way different, but like a movie I consider a horror movie that other people don't is eighth grade <laughs> because like I watch eighth grade and I'm like, oh, this movie makes me so uncomfortable. But that's like, yeah. I like, I feel like we, there's such a, uh, for so many times in casting, I've had people be like, cast this person who like has perfect hair in this way you can't get them sweaty and i'm like ah and that's not i love movies that don't always have that so right yeah it's more yeah. realistic that's that's yeah, real life exactly. yeah the, yeah. the girls with yeah. the perfect hair that can't sweat those are the people yeah. that would be making fun of people like me yeah. in school and uh that's why they don't Same. play those <laughs> yeah exactly exactly uh, yeah that's what we are today you know yeah you're exactly you're Tony's a guy and I'm a guy and uh, <laughs> the podcast. I'm still awkward. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. so, so what do you have in the works? I know you said that you're working on a movie now. You can't say too much about it, but uh, any, yes. any kind of uh, anything that you can possibly talk about. Anything I can say so little, but I will say that like, it's in the same vein of it's like um, people doing horrifying things. Um, which like, again, I like all genres of horror, but I like seeing people just be really horrible at the core of who they are is especially horrifying for me. So that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing I can say about it. <laughs> nice. Be yeah. Because especially with people, like, especially with Spoonful of Sugar, it's like, as the movie progresses, it just, you see it two different sides of certain people all the time. And it's just like, yeah. that's what happens in real life nowadays. It's sad, but it's like, can I really trust this person? Is this person telling the truth all the time? Yeah. It's like, hmm. Totally. Right. And I think like every these days. Oh, all the time. And I think like the thing too is we tried to show it's like, how does everyone in this movie just really think they're like doing it because they believe in it? And we're like, you shouldn't be doing that. But they like hardcore, like, but it's for family. And we're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like that's a thing too, where it's like there's so many Disney movies where it's like the theme is family is great. And I'm like, family is complicated. Like, how do we show that in a really different way? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, a yeah. no family's perfect. That's for sure. They may they may put up the front, but it ain't the case. I uh, yeah. I know. I, yeah. From jobs that I've done over the years, I'm like, oh, yeah, you guys try to look all fancy schmancy and you ain't. But um, yeah. so, yeah, you said that you were filming a movie before this one. Any idea when that one may be coming out? So not sure. We're still making the festival run right now. Like um, okay. we just went, it showed in India, now it's showing in Brazil. So fixation, it will still come out later. But like that one, like this one has surreal elements. Um, and it's even nice. more surreal in a lot of ways, but it's also a psychological horror too. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, did, did, did this one do the, the festival circuit at all or, or no? Yeah, it was at Fantastic Fest. Okay. Which is cool because it's like, other genre people, which we appreciate. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing is like, uh, they don't have a lot of film festivals around me. I've, I've driven mm -hmm. up to like Buffalo to, to go to one and it was awesome. And I, I like it, that. That's the thing is it's like, I wish there was more ways because you have people that come on the show and like, oh, it's doing the festival run. Then three years later, it comes out. And I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to see this movie for so long. You know, no, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've like it, messaged filmmakers before and I'm like, hey, I like. I saw your movie at festival it was awesome and I can't see it anywhere. Like I want to show my friends what's going on. Yeah. And they all like, think I'm a liar. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the worst thing is sometimes it doesn't even come out. Sometimes it's like, okay, they I put know. it out and they're hoping for distribution or whatever. And it's like, um, what happened to this movie? Oh, we we're waiting too. And it's like, I know. come on. Yeah. But. The film industry is rough. <laughs> it is. Yeah. But you it know, is. with with uh, with streaming services like uh, like Tubi and stuff like that, that that really picked up a lot uh, during the pandemic, I think. And totally. I, there's a lot of filmmakers that have been going that route because they actually get paid. You know, like mm -hmm. as opposed to being streaming on Amazon, yeah, it's cool to say my movie's on Amazon, but they're making like pennies. And then you totally. know, we have other directors that have been on the show, and they're like, yeah, I've made more money on Tubi than I ever made the whole time my movie was on Amazon. Yeah, and totally. It's free and people will just watch commercials and it's it's okay, you know? Yeah. I'm fine yeah. with that. Although I wouldn't want commercials <laughs> in this movie. 
<laughs> think of ticket, you know, it's just like because yeah. they would pick commercial. the worst. Yeah. They would pick the worst time to do it too, and it's like yeah, in the middle of a sentence, yeah. in yeah. the middle of yeah. it, something, and it's like okay, commercial. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the middle of the bunny scene. Uh, yeah, just like, can't All mess right. up the bunny scene. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great. I need auto insurance. It's awesome. Thanks, General. <laughs> Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah. So do you have anything else in the works? Like, like, so with directing, have you ever, are you ever going to dabble in writing or anything? You mean you have a lot of good yes. ideas? Sounds like. So I, I do. I actually, um, Katrina who produced this, her and I also write together and we have a horror movie called escape, um, that we wrote. And, um, basically I can tell you a little bit about that one. Um, okay. but do you, do you guys know what incels are? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. what it looks at is, the woman who actually created Encels was a shy queer woman and she did it because she was really lonely. And mm. so she was like, I want to find a place for friends and people I can talk to and people who are like me. And what happened is the group went very awry and there has been, you know, lots of shootings. And so she realized she left the group and years later she saw, Oh my God, like, this is what happened. Like I meant it for be to be a place for people to come together. And so ours is kind of a possessing take on that where there's all these shootings and she has to go back online to find out how to stop the next shooting before it happened. Oh, and so, <laughs> yeah, and so it's very different from this, but it's like a horror movie that's like an inspired by history. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, it it's not like direction. this isn't a thing that's going on any, you know, it's, it's this is yeah. all things that are happening. So <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Sergio is saying he knows a song called Spoonful of Sugar. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff yes. out there with the name Spoonful of Sugar, um, but <laughs> it's not two L's, it's one L. And I forget. There's, there's a. It's been going on. Like there was a movie. Uh, yeah, it was a song. It was, yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mm -hmm. know if it was "Song of the South" and "Song of the South." Jesus yep. Christ. Uh, not "Song about of the South." That'll never be made again. Right. The uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Thought about. I didn't mean that. I meant like I meant uh, the uh, sound of music. Completely yeah. different movies, just with S's. <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, uh, Mary Poppins, very different kind of babysitter, which is like where yeah. we got inspired by for the name. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Is it really? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we're like different take on the babysitter story. Oh, that's yeah. great. I didn't even, yeah. I mean, I just assumed that it was something else and, uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. That yeah. makes sense. Completely. I mean, also the acid is the spoonful of sugar. She tries to feed him. Yes. There you go. There you yep. go. Um, so th did any of the actors have issue? I mean, obviously the, the boy was a little too young. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. did they have, anyone have issue with any of the the the, the subject or anything or um, was not home? really i mean basically like when i was looking for actors to bring on i would have co honest conversations where i'm like you have to be feel great about this and be in it you know especially because we're doing a lot of sex scenes it's like it needs to be we have an intimacy coordinator and so it needs to be very very consent based of like everyone is signing up for this like very mm -hmm. much so beforehand um but Kat, who plays the mom, um, she is not a horror movie fan. And so oh, what's no. really funny is like for her, she's actually, she's pregnant with her second kid. <laughs> and we're like, how does that, this could be like a welcome present, Kat, for your new kid. <laughs> yeah. um, but like for her, she was like, Mercedes, this is so disturbing when I read this. Like, how? Like, this is so, this is so much. And so I think like she used that and brought it into this <laughs> of like oh, yeah. her feelings on motherhood. Yeah. She was great. Yeah, she was yeah. she was awesome. Um does she still have the same thoughts on horror movies? Because we've had people on that are like, I would I would have never thought of going into a horror movie and now I can't wait to film the next one. So I don't no, know if she's she, different I think she likes filming like, them. Yeah, filming them. Watching them is a different story, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because you're there when I'm it's like, all oh. happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like that yeah. like I, I was on one movie set where it was just like, oh, it's crazy, whatever, but like everyone's just chill whatever. Then I was, I was in something that has yet to see the light of day. And again, I don't know when it will, but uh, if it does, then my friends will realize I'm not a liar. Um, but y y you know, it, it's, it's different than watching them for sure. You know, mm -hmm. it's the, it's the magic of it, putting the whole story together yeah. and, and all that. So that's great. Um, yeah. So, cause I know we have to wrap up in a little bit, but uh you, you you said you knew you wanted to be a director all the way back from when you were a kid. When did you actually when did you actually start? Like, or were you a certain time in your life? Like, you actually started making yeah. short films or anything like that? Totally. I mean, like, I I started when like 
there's so many different points of starting. Like when I was in seventh grade, like I made like my first like movie with my classmates, but I, I went to USC film school. And so like, that's when I kind of started doing that. But I also never really went to class um, because I was too busy making things. <laughs> Cause I was like, wait a second. I'm like, if I stay in class all the time, I'll only make two shorts by the time I graduate. And I'm like, I need to be like making movies. Like I need to be like supporting myself and making a living doing this. And so I was just constantly like, making things, making things, making things. And so it's like, I have so many shorts that like a lot of them are things where I'm like, great, I made that, but like I can do better. And so I would like keep going and make like the next one and the next one. Um, so it was just kind of like that constant. And like I said, I come from the music video commercial world. And so that's what's cool coming into this movie is I got a lot of practice on set to be like, this works in this way and this doesn't in this way to kind of be able to like pour my heart into this movie. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's the one yeah. thing I... I... I think me as a uh, not only a horror movie fan, but just a movie fan in general, I like it when it's not the copy and paste. Like I went to school, I read it from a book and this is what they told me how to do it. I like it yeah. when you take the, you know, the maybe something people would look at and be like, that is a little bit different, but it works. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't, sometimes it does, but that, that's a beauty of it when it hits and it's like, I never thought about doing it this way. And it's like, yeah, nobody really didn't. And then it, and then it works. So, you know, yeah. going to, you know, going to USC and not going to class, I think it might've worked out in yeah. your favor because <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you have different visions of whatever so-and-so wrote in this book and how it should yeah. look this way. So. Exactly. Well, I think it's like, we have to learn, it's like learning the basics. So you know what you don't want to do or like what does or doesn't work. It's like, learn story structure, learn this, but then choose, Oh, I'm going to specifically not do this thing. Everyone else is doing. And Go make with it, it stick out make it uh yeah, yeah. the same the same goes for a lot they, i mean i can't even tell you how many arguments i've been in with friends that are musicians and i I play music as well and they're just like but theory wise that's not correct i'm like so like does it so, sound yeah. good yeah that's all that yeah. matters yeah totally yeah you know they've gone on to be like their professional teachers and they went to berkeley school of music and all this other stuff which is mm -hmm. great and it's it's awesome that they're teachers but i'm like got to let people like can't sit there and be like no you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong because they're not wrong yeah. you know yeah it's totally it's all by feel it's you know just because someone wrote feel. down this is the yeah. way to do it yeah it's because yeah, someone definitely. said this is like, how you do it yeah. that's how you the only way you can do it no yeah exactly. exactly or even like a lot of things that like you know horror movies exist on is i feel like it's all by feel it's like what gives you tension right and so i like to break down tension into three things it's like wanting to know what's going to happen or it's uh possibility of sex or fear of death and like, those are mm -hmm. very human things is we want to know why, or we want to know, like, be scared of something or be like, oh, this is heating, like, this is heating up. And so that's what I first loved about this movie is I'm like, it kind of takes all of those. And like, you know, some horror movies have like one or the other more strongly. And I'm like, let's combine all of these. In this yeah, let's do a little bit of everything. A little hodgepodge. Yeah. <laughs> Um, exactly. But yeah, no, that, that's, that's great. And uh, I know, uh, you know, you probably wouldn't do this, but uh have you ever thought like all your shorts from when you were in college and stuff like that? Is there a place where people can see those? <laughs> maybe I love that question. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll consider that at some point. You should, yeah. because like I said, I like to see yeah. people's progression. The first thing I saw you yeah. was kick ass. So I want to see like where you started to <laughs> how you got there. I mean, I can go back and watch Thank music you. videos and stuff, but yeah. uh, that would be cool. Well, That'd be cool to check yeah. that out. Totally. Yeah. Maybe I'll someday, that right? Cool idea. Maybe someday. Yeah. I think you yeah. might inspire me. Right, there you yeah. go. I've this is the first time in my life I've ever inspired anybody. So um I'm usually just, it's the I opposite way that. around. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm not uh, uh, one of those uh guys that just I'm always punching down negative so usually to myself. Yeah. Um <laughs> oh I always Kevin. appreciate self-deprecating humor. Oh yeah, yeah. But some of the some of the best comics out there hate themselves, you know, and I and I love it. But um uh yeah, actually most of the best comics out there hate themselves. But it's about that time we should probably be wrapping things up. So where can people go to find out more about what's going on with you? Uh, is there a, a yeah. place on social media, something where, where it's totally. a better place to follow you? Yeah. So on Instagram is where I am most at Mercedes Bryce Morgan. There you go. And you can check her yeah. out there and uh, you, you'll post on your other stuff. Hopefully I'll, I'll see I a will. post be like, Hey, I'm releasing all my short films. And um, I'll be like, here's <laughs> money. Give it, yeah. give it. Um, well, Sergio wanted to say too, uh, the movie looks great and great job and keep up the good work is what Sergio oh, said. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Sergio. Sergio's the man. Um, Tony, <laughs> what about yourself and your expanding TikTok community? 
Uh, you can find me at Tony is Nine Fingers on YouTube, where I do movie reviews, unboxings, anything movie related. Tony is Nine Fingers on Twitter. Tony is Nine Fingers on TikTok, which is pretty much my my go to now, just because it grew. So uh, you can check me out there when I you know post different things about movies. Uh, Tony's movies on Instagram, where I show off the movies behind me, and I make sure to tag everybody in it, and make sure you know, especially when I see. The, the one thing, too, that caught my eye was the cover art for it. And I was like, okay, this is definitely different, too. And that's the one thing. If I don't have the physical copy, I'll, I'll post a little picture of the, the poster just to make sure. Because sometimes people look at it and be like, Ooh, I'm interested in that. Not only trailers, but poster art as well. Uh, so check me out there. And, of course, here on the Wicked Horror Show, uh, every two, well, most Tuesdays. Most Tuesdays, whether we have, yeah. Most Tuesdays, whether we have an awesome guest or it's just horror movie talk where we talk about Spoonful of Sugar and then watch the movie after. Exactly. So, uh, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, A Knuckle on Instagram. Besides doing this show with the lovely Tony Has Nine Fingers. You're lovely, Tony. Ooh. And um, But uh, I also do Black and White Fright, uh, which is just an audio podcast. And I'm now part of uh, that strange show. So go check that out. We, we talk about a, a lot of up and coming movies and stuff as well. And I'm hoping that uh, Angel will... Let us talk about this one a little bit on an upcoming episode. But uh, yeah, you just check me out there. Thanks for watching slash listening. And if you're just listening, you miss out on seeing trailers. You miss out on, you know. Asking questions. Exactly. Checking a whole bunch of stuff. So do both. Yeah, First do both. watch us. And then as you're driving to work, you know, yeah. you forgot something or you missed the trailer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we want both numbers. We don't want us to lose listeners, but we want to gain viewers. So all right, just do both. Yeah, thanks. All right, so thanks, everyone, and we'll talk to you later. One second. I'm ending it now. <laughs>